Rajiv says, do I have to be married, reach the age of 40, to recite the dua mentioned in Surah Al-Ahqaf, ayah number 15? The answer is no. The ayah that goes to saying when he reaches maturity and reaches the age of 40 years, he says, my Lord, enable me to be grateful for your favor which you have bestowed upon me and upon my parents and to work righteousness of which you will approve and make righteous for me uh, my offspring. Indeed, I have repented to you and indeed I am of the Muslims. This dua is a general dua and it's part of the duas of the Quran. So you don't have to reach 40 to say this because this is when that person in the ayah said it. When he reached maturity, And he reached 40 years of age. This is when he started to praise Allah and thank him for that gift. But if you are like 20 years of age, there's no problem in saying that dua at all. Bearing in mind that saying this dua is not part of the sunnah. What do you mean, Shaykh? It's in the Quran. I know it's in the Quran. I've just read it for you. But it is not from the Sunnah in the sense that the Prophet ﷺ did not say that dua. It was not reported to us that he used to say that dua. So if the Prophet did not do it, والسلام, does this mean it's haram? I didn't say it's haram. I said it is not from the Sunnah which means that it can be permissible to say it, but it is not from the sunnah. We're confused. No, there's no reason to be confused. In Sahih al-Bukhari and elsewhere, there was a man who used to lead his companions in salat. And every surah he reads, he combines to it, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ So he reads two surahs. So his companions said to him, listen, Either re recite one surah or recite Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. There's no reason to combine both of them. He said, listen, you ask me to lead you in prayer. You don't like me to lead your prayer. Go and choose someone else. So they went to the Prophet and complained, والسلام, And he said to them, ask him, why does he read it? So they did. And he said, because I love it due to the fact that it includes the description of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Prophet said to him, والسلام, your love to it or for it made you enter Jannah. And Allah loves you for that. So now the Prophet approved والسلام, this man reading it. And we know that approval of the Prophet والسلام, is a sunnah. There is a sunnah of him saying things, a sunnah of him doing things, a sunnah of him approving things. Now when we say it's a sunnah, does it mean that if we do it, we are rewarded for it like other sunnahs? Scholars said no. Approving him here means that it is permissible to do like this companions had done. You can recite, for example, uh, Surah Wadduha, and after you conclude it, you say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad. No problem in that. But this is not the best thing for you to do. Because the Prophet والسلام, had never done such a thing. So if there were extra reward in it, or if it was a better thing to do, the Prophet would have done it. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali would have done it. The great companions of the Prophet would have done it, but none of them did. So it was only this isolated incident with, with the, this particular companion who had done it. So we have the choice between following the Prophet والسلام, anticipating the highest and the best reward ever, or following that companion. And definitely following that companion would reduce your reward but it's not something haram or dislike it's simply permissible and the best is to follow the sunnah of the prophet alayhi as-salatu wassalam allah 
عز وجل نوز بست